Hello, this is Dr. Snootopia with Love Evolution Village. We can see the village starting to form. Today is October 15th. There have been international protests to occupy everywhere. In London, in Rome, in Spain, in the Netherlands, all around the world, Belgium, people came out today and protested the banking system. It is collapsing. We, and this is worldwide. We saw this kind of activity happening, it, it, not exactly like this, but in the 1960s, there was almost a revolution. And that was uh, inspired by Marxism. Uh, is this one inspired by Marxism? Are we taking a new mythos here of a more egalitarian uh, system? I, it's too, I cannot tell you that it is Marxist inspired. I'm not sure what it is, but I think that we are going to have to address some basic issues here about order and anarchy, about how we reorganize our culture to allow the creative impulse to happen. And that's been what the capitalist system has done to let innovation happen and also some kind of mythos that allows people a unity consciousness uh, that we feel a part of each other as sisters and brothers in a human family. So this is the conflict. And my friend Tara uh, is very concerned that the consensus model brings about a unity that doesn't allow for individuality. Now, in the best of all possible worlds, uh, and that's where we've got to go, the best of all possible worlds, it is through education that the individual discovers who they are through uh, the self-inquiry process. You know what your talents and gifts are, and that's what you want to contribute to society. And you're going to have to plug in to a society in order to give your gifts and talents. Well, that's what we're looking for, is this new mythos that allows for each one to give their mythos without being restricted by groupthink, by group consciousness. Now, what happened in the former USSR was that the form of communism that grew on, in that country was oppressive. One of the first things that Lenin did was that he got rid of the artist who helped create that revolution, like Vasily Kandinsky, who I read his complete works. He became a minister of culture uh, uh, through the Russian uh, after the Russian Revolution. And eventually he was kicked out because they did not like his form of expression. The surrealists were not listening to, even though it was the time when Freud was coming up with his whole theory of unconsciousness. And uh, there was the surrealists who were creating like these dreamlike uh, landscapes that weren't real. Well, the communists uh, wanted uh, what they called uh, social realism, uh, three-dimensional looking at things. There wasn't the mystery. So this whole uh, suppression happened of the human spirit. And we ought to beware of this kind of groupthink that does not allow for individuality. Now, a very important point that Tara and I have discovered is that the Occupy Tucson movement has two components. The, on, the online community component, uh, that means through Facebook, and they also have a website, and then the uh, general assemblies where they're actually occupying a space. Right now it's Armory Park. So you have these two components. Now for the last, uh, has it been three weeks or two weeks, um, the online community has been active. They've been organizing, uh, waiting for this day, October 15th, when they would actually uh, occupy the park. Okay, 
So Tara starts bringing up this whole idea of the uh, suppression within the communist ideology of not allowing the individual to be heard. And that was somehow seen as very threatening and there was some suppression of her ideas uh, that was happened and she was banned and censored from the online community. Well, knowing Tara is not a should not be treated in that fashion. I stood up for her. I wrote two paragraphs of why I believed in freedom of speech and that we, the community needs the critics. They need to hear them. They need to take it in. And sometimes they need to change their ways. That's what social critics do. They're there to help the group. And without social critics, then you live in a totalitarian regime where if you criticize the king, then he will chop off your head. And so Tara experienced the chopping off of the head. And since I defended her, then what happened to me is my head also was chopped off. This is a very uh, disturbing problem within the Occupy Tucson movement because we create these uh, online dialogues that uh, you put a lot of effort into. Uh, each post that I created, I thought about, I had to check the spelling. I uh, corrected the grammar. You know, you, you want your best effort there. And then for it to, um, it, for people to not like it, and eventually uh, they um, banished me from the online community too. And I think it was because, well, I'm an utopian. I'm, I'm creating a feminist utopia. Uh, that is what I want to do. I see the movement, uh, the revolution, as the woman's uh, era coming about. Uh, the, the world has to uh, be following now the, this divine feminine in us that has been oppressed and suppressed by the individual, self-censorship for centuries. This is a century problem of banishing what we call the hags, the crones, the women of wisdom, the women who have had experience with the patriarchy, who will no longer be fooled by the patriarchy. And these young women we see, they just suck up to the men. They're, they're just sucking up to them. Why? Because that's how you get power and prestige within our culture. And it's the way that women can get a voice because if you have a guy and maybe he'll share the mic or uh, uh, that kind of arrangement because of the sexual contract. Well, the crones and the hacks, they a lot of times they no longer have that sexual contract that they did at 20. And so uh, you, you become like this independent thinker. You can uh, rebirth yourself. You're birthing the, uh, the divine feminine within you that is uh, totally independent of the masculine, uh, but wants to uh, co-create in a way that we haven't done before. It's the, it's the merging of genius codes together, as Barbara Marks Hubbard says, one of my mentors. So how I see this movement is that for one thing, we do need the Camp Alpha Female. That's what we created today. Once Tara and I got banned from the online community, we, how could we work with those people anymore? You've been banned and censored. Your voice is, 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 is not um, important. You become a non-person. So we thought, okay, we don't want to be victims of their power structure anymore. So we took it on ourselves. We created a Camp um, alpha female. And then we decided we'd have an action. And our action on today, October 15th, this day of international protest, was that we set up at the gates of the University of Arizona. We looked into the legal situation of the university. Um, an outsider like us who were not, are not students there, I mean, were lifelong students uh, and we should be uh, actually engaging with the youth because of this knowledge. 
However, because we do not pay tuition, we are not considered students. Therefore, we cannot go onto the university campus with our protest signs and say, occupy the University of Arizona. This is the real place. And to me, it is the real power place, not the banks. The banks have this abstract thing in their vaults called either, well, called money, which it's mostly digitized now. So they don't have the real power. The real power is in the university where you're teaching the youth. We have to persuade the youth to change over. To, uh, we have to convince their hearts and minds of a better system. And we don't do that through propaganda, but through dialogue, through engaging them in creative thinking, in having their minds expand by uh, new ideas. And that is exactly where I see my role. I want to engage the youth in lively um, debates about which system is best? How do we do it? So my vision is, okay, we get Occupy Tucson here. Um, we get enough people that we really can have an occupation. And, and we just stay. We get the students involved. We start a university on uh, Occupy Tucson or Occupy the University. And once we get a student movement going, then we can really come out of the closet as teachers who have not had pl places to teach and start teaching, start giving our wisdom. But wait a minute, it's not just about education and changing education because this is a societal change. It's a lifestyle change from a unsustainable economic system that is, uh, that is, that is founded on coal, oil, nukes and gas and to changing it over to the new energy regi regime which is the solar energy regime and to do that we need the engineers we need the scientists we need the people with knowledge who can help us design this new civilization type we're moving from a type zero civilization, which is just this chaotic um, urban sprawl situation into the type one civilization that we start planning for our long-term future. We get rid of the nukes, especially the nuclear weapons and the nuclear power plants. And then we start redeveloping uh, our cities based on ecological designs. My, uh, so, at the university, I see the tents rising. I see the students starting to understand their power and their role in it. It will start small. We need a group of four individuals who will go uh, to the U of A on the mall or somewhere, it doesn't even have to be the mall, camp up and then start to spread the word. Now, how can we do that? Well, we found an excellent way for this uh, revolutionary dialogue to happen. Today, we are at the front gates because it's illegal for us to go on the mall and speak. We set up some of these uh, speakers, the uh, handheld uh, uh, megaphones. We had two of them, and we set them up so that uh, two people could speak and there could be a dialogue. And when this dialogue happened, this beauty happened, we started playing off of each other's ideas and words. So it became more of a jazz festival. And I, I want to get another megaphone so we can try three people speaking and, and the dialogue happening. And then when one of us got tired, then another person came on so we had this constant dialogue for like six hours of open mic at the university and the students who were just like walking around being consumers, you know, on their little shorts and, and uh, high heels maybe, or, you know, just like these, uh, this uh, unpoliticized uh, youth. 
would kind of come by and, it, you know, they, did, they want to ignore us, like we, we're not even there. But unconsciously, you see, uh, we affected their thought. And that is what is important. This is how things happen. It gets into the unconsciousness and then they start having it come into their consciousness. But we started it, you see. The, the hags, the camp alpha females, because what is most important to us and why Tara and I are such great allies is because we both believe in free speech, that through spe free, free speech and the dialogue process that we get into a deeper understanding of what our problems are and how we can address them. And then our ideas change too. I mean, I looked at some of my old poetry and I went, God, I, I don't even think like that anymore. And that's what happens, uh, especially if you've been an artist for a long time, like I have, and you look at your old stuff and you just go, God, did I ever create that? You know, because we're a constantly evolving uh, uh, creatures. That's what is so exciting about the internet because we are online constantly. This is uh, a real time, real life revolution, live streaming. And so we can start to understand the um, voices that really have something to say of how to rearrange our world. And we can start having this uh, jazz dialogue happening uh, all around the world so that we can, this, uh, the neurons of the planet are being formed. We're becoming a planetary organism and we're about to have a mass gasm. And the mass gasm is this wonderful, blissful state when we finally realize that we have the power to make some real fundamental changes in how we deal with resources. Uh, the slogan of the Occupy Everywhere movement is the, they, we are the 99%. And that 1% is the rich who owns all of the wealth, and the rest of us are just um, falling behind. And then there are all these uh, people that live in just these, the state of utter poverty. They have no um, anything. They don't have any food to eat. So we have that group of people, too, who are even worse than the 99%. So... If we are going to take care of the 99%, then we're going to have to rearrange the way that our world works. And that's, that's a real problem. I mean, in all situations that I know about, we can agree on what the problems are. But when it comes to the solutions, that is the real catcher. <laughs> that is when the conflicts arise because when you're talking about the future, you're talking about this uh, kind of intuitive leadership that you know, it hasn't happened yet. You know, and, and the way to be one of these future leaders is to deal with the present moment, with your visionary ideas, with your plan. And that's why you know, a lot of like the central planning that happened during the Russian Revolution uh, when they nationalized all of the resources. Um, is that the way to go? Well, what do I think about that? I think that we need to have like a Earth Bank. Uh, this is a Buckminster Fuller idea. And also a Jock Fresco idea of ha building a resource-based economy. Now the Earth Bank, we would have a supercomputer that would have all the data, it'd be a, a worldwide accounting system where we account for all of our, the um, resources of the planet, the copper, the steel, the water, the forest, all of these things go into the worldwide database. Then we also have to have uh, things like, okay, where is the safest places to build the new cities? Well, well, uh, you know, that don't have, are not on tsunami zones or not on earthquake faults. You know, how, where should we b even build anything? You know, this is another uh, level of um, 
organization, which you'd need geologists to help tell us and, and people who deal with earthquake information. This is why you can see that in order for this revolution to happen, we need all of the, the sophisticated knowledge that we have now. Uh, uh, such things like, um, you know, uh, real data about what the global warming is doing. You know, do we need to create closed uh, ecosystems w underneath uh, geodesic domes or polysolaries arcology? Uh, do we need to uh, migrate into outer space to protect the human race? Is Earth in such a ecological crisis uh, that we actually need to evacuate planet Earth? Now, we have nobody that's really collecting all this information. We're in some kind of global anarchy now. And this, uh, uh, that all these nation states are really warring with each other rather than bringing information together and saying, okay, you, we, we know this, we know that, how, uh, uh, and trying to organize this uh, organism in a different way. Um, and then me, I mean, Gaia is very important to me. And that's where I'm getting a lot of in my, my knowledge is uh, the whole planetary consciousness, uh, uh, arranging this so we create this network of arcologies. Uh, arcologies is a concept by Dr. Paolo Soleri. Uh, and, and bring in architects that can deal with this uh, brilliant idea of building zero carbon, uh, uh, car-free cities. They're doing it in China. If the United States wants to have any kind of edge on anything dealing with ecological cities, which is the biggest um, uh, creative project ever, then we need to catch up with Germany, who is uh, almost 20% um, alternative energy, and with China, who are building these kind of cities. And I'm suggesting we do it on Arizona State Trust Land. So that's why I want to get on campus and be able to have the, um, the theaters necessary to show my slideshows, uh, to hold public discussions on what kind of architecture we need, and more importantly, what kind of social architecture we need. And that's the real important key, is this social architecture. Uh, so if you can only talk for two minutes at the General Assembly um, at, with the Occupy Tucson, you see there is a big problem uh, because it takes more time to do that. Uh, and we need to have 24-7 open mics so that people like me who have visions to say can do it and people who don't have visions can also say their part as well. Uh, and that's what Tara wanted. My friend that got banned from the Occupy Tucson online site and why I defended her right to free speech is because she wanted a 24 seven open mic. How, how wonderful is that to create a a revolution, or what I call it a levolution, because if it's going to be feminist-led, let's have love be our leader. I, don't you think that's a good idea for love? And then the men start listening to women, and then this love culture evolves. I mean, it's not that we don't listen to men. We do. I mean, my best critics are men, and I, I still am very tender towards men. But I just want this women to be free, finally. And I want men to be free. And I want children to be free. So let's start a free speech movement at the University of Arizona. You students, get your tents out and go there. Invite me to speak. I have a lot to tell. And I have a lot. I want to hear a lot from you. You have so much to say. You have been suppressed for so long. And I want to hear what you have to say. I know you've got a future if we work together. Two generations together, that's what we need. Thank you.